Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October the 1st. And these uh, first two articles were sent in by my friend Tom H. Watch Elon Musk reveal his plan for colonizing Mars right here. A lot of people don't realize it, but Elon Musk's goal for SpaceX is not just to deliver supplies up to the space station or anything like that. Uh, Elon Musk was actually really into interplanetary um, human colonization. So uh, I'll read a little bit from this article from TechCrunch.com. Musk doesn't just want us to touch the face of these extraterrestrial spheres. His intent with SpaceX has been to create a viable way for humans to actually colonize other planets and to live on Mars and presumably other suitable planets as well sustainably in the long term. Uh, SpaceX's Mars ambitions are no secret. Musk has been discussing the Red Planet since at least 2012. He would like to start a 10-person colony on Mars and then get it up to as many as 80,000. Now, we're talking quite a dream right now, and we're talking about the fact that it may not just be SpaceX, too. I mean, a lot of people have dreams like this, but SpaceX may end up being part of it along with some other partners, too. Maybe some other governments joining in for this uh, type of deal. And uh, uh, it says... Uh, Big questions we'll be looking to answer today revolve around the specific technical details of how Musk plans to get to and colonize Mars and how he intends to pay for the tremendous and likely very expensive undertaking. So, yeah, they even say in the article here, too, that it's not likely, I mean, it's possible, but it's not likely that he's going to do this by himself. He's going to need some help, but I like that he's one of the people that's keeping the dream alive. I mean, I think it's inevitable that if we want to survive as a species into the future, we're going to have to become interplanetary at least colonize both planets, Mars and Earth. So, uh, as usual, any links to any of the articles I'm talking about will be below in the description. In the second article, I talked about this before when they were building it, but this is the new Chinese single-dish space telescope. China hunts for scientific glory in aliens with new telescope. Uh, this is in Pingtang County, China, when hundreds of engineers and builders began clamoring up a jagged hill in southwestern China to assemble a giant telescope in a deep bowl-shaped basin, poor villagers sometimes crept over the sheer slopes to glimpse the country's latest technological wonder. We've never seen anything like it, said one villager, a sun gnarled 66-year-old carpenter. It's a big circle, a big iron wok. The wok is the world's largest single-dish radio telescope, and it's officially began operating on Sunday, which if you're seeing this on Sunday, it would have been the Sunday previous, accompanied by a jubilant national television coverage and more than five years of construction. The 500 meter aperture spherical telescope, um, which is uh, FAST is how they abbreviate it for short, is intended to project China's scientific ambition deep into the universe, bringing back dramatic discoveries and honors like Nobel Prizes. So I'm not really sure how much they're going to share it with other nations or allow other scientists, especially U.S. scientists, to use part of the time on the telescope, but you just never know. As things happen, I will try to keep up to date with that. And this is from Salon.com. Kind of sad. Signing off. CBS is getting out of the radio business. Is this finally the end of the medium? More and more Americans, and particularly young people, don't tune into radio stations at all anymore. But is this the end of radio, the medium that survived existential threats from TV, CD players, and iPods? Well, it seems now that they don't really count on young people to be uh, regular listeners to radio anymore. They plug their uh, phones in or use Bluetooth to stream to the uh, speakers in their cars and stuff, so listening onto the radio uh, for a lot of them is a thing of the past. In fact, they say in some cars now you have to go down through menus to get to the radio. They don't assume you're going to want to get in your car and listen to the radio, which is what I still do. I'm still kind of old-fashioned when I drive in the car, especially for any distance. I have my favorite radio stations that I play, but after 88 years in the business and 117 stations and 29 markets, they're going to first try to sell them off if possible, and if not, what CBS is going to do is they're going to put them up for uh, uh, initial public uh, initial public offerings as shares in a publicly traded company. So it'll become a publicly traded company on the stock market. So, yeah, kind of sad to see CBS getting out of the radio business after all this, but I think eventually everything is going to go to uh, uh, more or less uh, uh, streaming type of format and uh, information delivered that way instead of setting up radio stations with big powerful transmitters and just hoping you get out far enough because that's a lot of money and power and effort into just covering a, a small audience area and the farther away you get the harder it is to get the signal whereas if it's over the internet and you stream it that way anybody that's got an internet connection and I I see in the future two radios that have built-in buffering your radio is basically going to be a computer and it'll 
pick up from uh, little repeaters all over the place, uh, probably even out in rural areas. They'll set up uh, internet repeaters or use the cell towers, and so they'll handle it that way. And last up, I have another guest joining me on the TDD report. This is my friend Heather Salisbury, who is a crafter and an artist friend of mine. She's done work for a group that I belong to. She is getting into the uh, bushcraft and camping business. And uh, I'll let you uh, take a look at one of the handmade items here, and then I'll tell you it's very reasonably priced. Um, take it away, Heather. Hi, this is Heather from P&W Bushcraft, and I just wanted to show you our new design we did today. And I would love some feedback from you guys, because I was really impressed with the way that this cinches shut. See how nice that is? It's one of our round bottom bags with, with a different closure system. So, thanks. Bye. Okay, thank you, Heather. And, and as usual, a lot of times when you go for... Uh handcrafted items you expect to pay a lot of price but I asked Heather what for example would be the the price of the smaller canvas bag um, and she said somewhere in the range of twenty dollars which is really for a handmade item and crafted well I know the quality of work she does would be a very good price and uh, yeah getting getting good quality getting made in the USA and getting it made by a craftsman and still keeping the price reasonable is something really great and all the links will be down below it's uh, she's in the Pacific Northwest so uh, Obviously, her company would be PNW Bushcraft, which is Pacific Northwest, and the links uh, would be uh, down below. So check out the links, and uh, if you also have an idea for something that she could possibly make from you, especially out of leather or canvas, um, contact her and, and let her know. Um, that's the nice thing about it, too. It's not just stamped out items. If you need something slightly designed different or something like that, it's always good to have a craftsman make it. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.